Hello everyone, in this video, we're gonna answer the question, do deadlifts train back? Now, what do we mean by back? Obviously, there's a lot of stuff on the back side of the body, and deadlifts do train a large portion of that, but it's not what most people think. Most people think that there's a good amount of lat involvement, there's a good amount of upper back recruitment, and there's a good amount of erector recruitment. And I would really only say that a deadlift or an RDL, any kind of hinge-based motion, is really only gonna train the third category of those muscles, the erector muscles. So let's sort of dissect this. Let's talk about why I wouldn't recommend using deadlifts or rack pulls or anything similar for training the upper back or the lats, but rather training the hips and the erector. So from a basic physics perspective, this is sort of what the typical hinge-based motion looks like. Now, we don't wanna to be too critical of just the X's and O's of these joint positions. Sure, there will be individual variants. Some people in this example will have you know, their hips in a higher position and their knees may be straighter or maybe they're less straight because someone has to use more knee bend, right? All that aside, the principles are gonna remain the same here. So this is sort of the, the ending position where someone's at the top. And this is someone uh, who is sort of at the bottom of their deadlift about to start. And this dotted red line represents the direction of resistance of the exercise. Now, imagine that this stick figure on the right has arms and they're holding a bar. That's essentially where the bar, bar is gonna fall somewhere over their midfoot, right? Because if it's not over their midfoot, they're gonna fall forward or they're gonna fall backward or something like that. So in order to actually understand from a force perspective what's going on here, we need to do some doodles. And so I'm gonna select, we'll say blue over here. And in order to understand how this force actually relates to the rest of our body, we draw something called a moment arm. Now, a moment arm is essentially just a distance. It's not a tangible distance, but it represents a distance that is important in understanding how much resistance is placed at which joints. So whenever you have a line of force and you're looking at something from this 90 degree perspective, a moment arm is essentially this distance to the joint. Now, it's meant to be straight. It won't be perfectly straight because of my drawing skills, but that is essentially the moment arm uh, of resistance to the hip and you can see how long it is right and everything every segment along the spine also has a moment arm meaning that the longest moment arm is to essentially these segments down here right uh, the hip itself the lower segments of the spine like the lumbar spine and as we travel further up the spine right toward the thoracic spine the mid back uh, we see that those segments have less force on them because they're closer to the resistance, meaning that this distance, these blue lines are shorter. And as we move farther away from where the resistance is, resistance is higher. Now, from this perspective, you don't see the person's arm. So let's see what that would look like in a real life scenario, right? So this is a real person. And let's say now that this red line is gonna represent the resistance, right? So the resistance in either case is just going straight down. So if you extend this resistance upward, all the way up, 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 right? There's going to be some distance, and I'll draw this in a different color blue, to the hip in this position, right? And there's also gonna be some distance to all the segments of the spine, and there's also gonna be some degree of distance, right? All the way up, I'm just drawing these, right? Obviously not too accurately, but like to the shoulder, right? To the, to the sternoclavicular joint, to the joints of the neck, right? This line of force has an influence at all of these different segments. But really what we're focused on is where there's the most amount of resistance, i.e. in this position, where this person is holding the bar here, right? And we can extend this line of force upward. And you can tell that this is not too heavy for this person because for this to be a, a super heavy load, usually what you see is the resistance is stacked directly underneath of the shoulder joint, which is kind of what we're gonna really be talking about here in terms of why the deadlift doesn't really train a lot of the back muscles that people typically think. So here's, we'll say approximately the axis of the hip, right, where the hip joint is. And we'll draw this moment arm now in red, all the way to the line of force, right? And at every single segment, again, meant to be straight, just ignore that. At every single segment up on the spine, all these moment arms get shorter and shorter. And now where they are the shortest are right around here, exactly where the resistance is going through. In other words, the shoulder joint. So what does this tell us? Well, the muscles that act on the shoulder in holding a bar are going to be the ones that have to do the least amount of work. Of course, they're gonna to have to do some amount of work for our shoulders and our arms not to just fly off of our bodies. But the only thing that the lats, the upper back, 
is doing in this case is essentially preventing, again, the bar from just pulling our shoulders off forward, right? And in this top position, you could make the argument that the traps and those kinds of things, yeah, they're holding our shoulders upward and preventing them from getting pulled downward. But in this bottom position where theoretically there would be mo more resistance on them, right? Even in that position, there's very little resistance in comparison to the joints of the hip and the lower back, specifically the lumbar spine, and even the, sp the sort of middle segments of the spine, right? And if you know anything about lat anatomy, if you know anything about upper back anatomy, you know that the lats and the upper back do not extend the spine, meaning that in this position, and I'll erase some of this just so it's a little bit more clear, this line of force, this blue line of force here, is trying to essentially fold this person forward, right? So in other words, if you're familiar with like cat-cow, right, the cat is sort of rounded back, that's what a deadlift is trying to do to the spine. So we have to ask, okay, what are the muscles that prevent the rounding from happening? All of the tissues called spinal extensors, oops, I'll draw them in red here, that sit along the back side of the spine that prevent, essentially move this entire torso this way, right, called spinal extension. So arching your back, that's spinal extension. Rounding your back, that's spinal flexion. The deadlift is trying to encourage us to round our spine, meaning that the bar is trying to round our backs over. And so what resists that are the things that do the opposite, right, the spinal extensors. The lats do not do that action, and the upper back does not do that action. For all intents and purposes, it's really just the spinal extensors, and then obviously all this force, again, from this long distance, this moment arm distance to the hip, okay? So from a force scenario, there's a ton of force on the hip, there's a ton of force on the lower spine. Great exercise, great choice for training the, especially the lower portions of the erectors and the hips, right? Like the glutes, the adductors, and the hamstrings. So what might be a better option for training the back, specifically the upper back and the lats, depending on the variation, are exercises like these. Now, what do these exercises do? Well, if we draw a line of resistance up from the cable here, and we sort of extend it down, right? We can see moment arm distance here, moment arm to the elbow, right? And essentially we're in a position where there's a ton of resistance on the shoulder, there's a ton of resistance on the elbow, depending on sort of what your goals are. This person is not in what I would think is the best position to do a pull down, right? But hopefully the point is clear that what is prevented from happening is any motion other than at the shoulder, meaning that there's very little resistance on the spine, right? Essentially in this position, the spine is just sort of getting pulled up to the ceiling. But what resists that is this whole big pad right here, pushing downward against us. So when we pull something down, we want to get pulled up, right? The resistance wants to pull us up, but that is prevented from happening because of this pad. And in the instance here, we can't really draw moment arms and analyze resistance from this perspective because it's not at a 90 degree angle, right? But you can imagine the resistance is pulling this guy forward here from both hands and this pad, right? This whole chest support thing here, and I'll just erase that so as to not muddy the water, is essentially pushing this person this way. So a really, really <clears throat> solid upper back and lat exercise is one where, in a sort of opposite sense, the chest and the spine are not allowed to move, right? They're being essentially blocked completely by something like this, like this chest support, or like this attachment on a lat pull down, where there's a, essentially a prevention of force that's put through the spine, meaning that spine forces are minimized, trunk forces are minimized, so that we can maximize the stimulus that's happening here and that's happening here, right? All the moving joints that we actually want to move and train. So in the context of a deadlift, again, deadlifts, primarily in terms of back stuff, recruit the erectors, the tissues that prevent the spine from rounding. But when we tr are trying to train the back, the tissues that don't prevent the spine from rounding, we need to fix the spine, prevent it from moving, and just move the shoulders and the elbows around something that is fixed that will allow us to make those tissues limiters. So overall, if you're trying to use deadlifts to train your back, totally fine as long as it's for the erectors. But if you're trying to achieve some degree of stimulus in the lats and the upper back, right, the rhomboids, the traps, the rear delts, the teres, the lats, right, all those things, we want to make uh, managing the trunk and trunk position very, very easy so that we don't overcomplicate any motion. Even something like a barbell row tends to be a little bit complicated for people to execute because again, uh, much of the resistance in those cases are is placed on the hips and the lower portions of the spine. So if your goals are to train lats, if your goals are to train upper back, use a chest support, 
user restraint like the the thigh pad here and stop doing deadlifts, stop doing rack pulls, right? Do the things that are more specific to those tissues. If you have any disagreements with this, if you have any counterpoints, love to hear them. Drop them in the comments and I'm happy to discuss. If you like this video and you want to learn more from me, please consider enrolling in my online anatomy and biomechanics course. The course contains over 15 hours specifically dedicated to improving your understanding of anatomy and physics and how it applies to lifting weights. Over 3,000 students have enrolled in this course and have reported back that it's the most easy to digest material that doesn't include any sort of boring textbook lecture that you might normally find in a typical college curriculum. So if you want to improve your ability to lift and as a consequence, grow muscle more easily and reduce your pain in the gym, check out the link in the description.